The Last Witch Hunter is Vin Diesel's latest attempt to prove that he can carry a film outside of the Fast and Furious franchise, because let's face it, his last big budget non-franchise movie was Babylon AD, which pretty much nobody went to see because it was a pile of hot garbage. Sadly, Diesel's latest attempt is a film that tries to be too many things to too many people while succeeding at none of them. Part Blade, part Inception, and with a sprinkling of The Last of Us, this is a near incomprehensible fantasy failure which sees Vin Diesel's 800-year-old witch hunter teaming up with a sexy female witch, played of course by Game of Thrones' Rose Leslie, as they attempt to stop the Witch Queen from unleashing havoc on all of humanity, or something like that anyway. That's the real problem here. For a film that's concerned with Vin Diesel killing witches, it's just so damn boring. For one, there's barely any action in it until the very end of the film, and the script just aggressively bombards the viewer with reams and reams of blatant exposition before anything actually happens. Almost every time it looks like the action is just about to ramp up, we'll get a 15 second fist fight, and then we'll get back to more boring talking. Like the worst entries into the fantasy genre, there's just not a lot of internal logic to cling to here. Things happen because magic. And you either have to just go along with the ride or spend 106 minutes wishing you were pretty much anywhere else. The plot raises numerous questions which it implies it's going to answer before the film finishes, but instead they're left agonisingly wide open for no reason at all. Then there's the cast. Vin Diesel sleepwalks his way through this movie. And I say that as someone who really likes Vin Diesel. Then there's Michael Caine who is in it for just 15 minutes. And Elijah Wood is really the only person remotely trying to make this work. Wood plays the witch hunter's priest psychic character, and now this promises a really intriguing double act between the two, um, the screenplay sadly fails to play up the potential bromance. While the unexpected humour does give the film a slight boost, 90% of what you see here is just dull, template-driven nonsense, including a relatively predictable plot twist and a laughably forced romance shoved into the film in the final two minutes. All the more painful because Vin Diesel and Rose Leslie have zero chemistry in this film, romantic or otherwise. This really feels like the sort of low effort trash you'd end up seeing dumped in January or February. But with a $90 million price tag, most of which does not appear on the screen by the way, uh, distributors Summit Entertainment are clearly hoping for a colossal hit. What they're forgetting of course is that Vin Diesel does not thrive as a leading man. He is much better off in an ensemble. And just because Furious 7 cracked a billion dollars, it doesn't mean he should be leading a film this ridiculously, indecently expensive. I would be shocked if the film was financially successful, and I suspect it will struggle to make its budget back. Though it looks fine and is occasionally elevated by some well-placed comedy, The Last Witch Hunter is a devastatingly dull fantasy flick that would have benefited from more action sequences, an R rating, and a budget evidently less bloated by studio accounting. I give the movie a 3 out of 10, do not go see it, and if you're just really curious, please, please wait till Netflix. This film really doesn't deserve your money. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll be here from dusk till Sean.